I think everybody's in the same boat of wanting to do something, but what do you actually do with the situation going on in the city and around the world to be able to actually help? You know, host homes is new and maybe it won't be the answer, but it could be. And so it seemed like a great way to, to start and find out. I think Host Homes came at the perfect time because it really just showed me the importance of family and close connection. It just opened up so much community, so much comfort. I've been in San Francisco since 2015. I'm not too close with my family. It was pretty hostile for a while. Last summer, I had like a really tough breakup which led to moving out and then I lost my job and I took it super hard and dealt with a lot of depression and needed to get connected to services in San Francisco. I just let the center know my housing was super unstable and from there it came out, oh, well, we're doing a host homes program. Host Homes is a program where we connect San Francisco community members who have a spare room with LGBTQ plus unstably housed young adults to offer housing. We offer ongoing support to the hosts and we meet weekly with young adults to work on goals including employment, education, and community building that leads towards permanent housing. I think my personal thought process, and I won't speak for Desimon, but was healthy suspicion. <laughs> Some of the concerns I had were biases from observing the homelessness crisis on the streets of San Francisco. And it quickly became apparent that that is not the type of homelessness that the, the program is designed to address. And so the concerns I had quickly shifted from that to more things centered on just the uncertainties about respecting boundaries and, and preferences both ways, frankly. Some of the original concerns that Desima and Adam had and other families, of course, are understandable with letting any stranger into your home in the exact same way that a young adult has a lot of concerns about going into a stranger's home as well. And we have multiple meetings where um, young adults and hosts will meet. We'll go over folks' wants and needs on, on both sides. You know, quiet hours, substance use, guests. And so by the time a young adult moves into a host home, Expectations are very clear on how folks will cohabitate and, and build community with each other. Jay moved in two days before the mayor announced shutdowns for the coronavirus. They're around more than I think anybody anticipated, but actually it, it's been great. <laughs> they are really very cool and the kids really admire them. Our relationship with Jay is beyond my expectations. Spending time with the kids, it's been like really nice thinking about how my actions can affect everybody else in the house is helping me kind of figure out the future. As Jay transitions out of host homes, I'll continue to meet with them for six months to support them as they enter permanent housing and continue to build a safety net financially and with an expanded community of support. The types of persons that can benefit from host homes, there is a wide spectrum, but it's individuals that are very close to being independent but not really having a support structure in place to facilitate that in the way that I know I personally had growing up. Host Homes is a softer place to land while you're figuring things out and you've got all these great people around to show care and support. I think right now I'm not just alone trying to do better and I think that's how I've spent most of my life, just trying to figure it out by myself and that really hasn't been working for me. After living with a host family, I look at the kids and Adam and Desma, and I think it would be grounding to live with my own family or at least visit them for a, a while. 
living here has kind of made me recognize that the relationships are really able to change and I want to change them.